Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly and in this video, we're going to take a look at that. How can you do a VLOOKUP in Power Query? Now you can obviously do a VLOOKUP in Excel, but why would you do a VLOOKUP in Power Query? Power Query has two main advantages. One is that if you have enormous volumes of data, Power Query can do the VLOOKUP really, really fast. And the second advantage is that uh, the VLOOKUP becomes automated. So if you have to do the VLOOKUP over and over again, you just have to click refresh. That's about all about it. Now, although you can do an ex extremely fast VLOOKUP in Excel as well on large volumes of data, if you want to learn that, you can just follow up the link. I'm just going to leave the link somewhere in the blog and you can just take a look. But in this video, we're going to take a look at how can you do a VLOOKUP in Power Query. All right, let's get started. When you're doing a VLOOKUP in Power Query, you just have to remember this thing that in VLOOKUP, you have two sets of data. One set of data is the data where you write your VLOOKUP formula. And the other set of data is the data where you search for the value. So this is the data where I'm going to write the VLOOKUP formula. Let's just take a look at this data. This is, these are nothing but transaction codes. And against this transact code, I want to find some value, right? And then we have the source data. So let's just take a look at the source data. In the source data, we have six columns. We have the transaction code. We have the date. We have the value, region, category, and the manager. And this is nearly half a million rows of data, about 500,000 rows of data. You can take a look. Now, uh, this is my source data, and this is the data where I will write the VLOOKUP formula. So this is going to go something like this. If you were doing this in normal Excel equals to VLOOKUP, look up this, look up where, look up in this data, um, and give me then the third column and then false. This is how you would write the VLOOKUP in Excel. So there are two sources and both these sources of data, that means this data where you write the VLOOKUP formula and this data, which is your source data, have to be loaded as a query in the same Excel file. All right, so uh, although this file is open right now, I don't really need this file to be open to be able to work with Power Query. So I'm just gonna close this file and only work with this file. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is go to data and then click on get data. Uh, your power query could be on the top somewhere power query because mine is excel 2016 so my, my power query comes built in in the data tab yours could be separate as well if you do not have excel 2016. all right so data tab get data from file from a folder sorry from a workbook because i have to get data from the workbook so it says which workbook i select the path on the top and i pick up the data from here and then click on import all right. It, now it's going to go inside that uh, file data and I'm just going to tell them that, hey, um, this is there on the first sheet. Uh, my data is kept on the first sheet and I'm just going to click on edit. Now, as soon as I do that, Power Query is going to go inside the data file on the first sheet and get all the data in Power Query. And you can just take a look uh, in Power Query window. I have all the data, all the 500,000 rows of data in front of me. As of now, I can just see a sample of a thousand rows. Now I'm just going to say close and load, but Hey, I don't really need this data to be dumped inside my current Excel workbook. I just want my Excel to remember this data so that I can search in this data. So I'm just not going to say close and load. I'm going to say close and load too. And I'm going to say that, Hey, please make a connection only and don't load this data into my Excel workbook. Otherwise it's going to make my Excel workbook heavy. So only create a connection and then click on okay. Now uh, let's just give it a better name, not sheet one. Let's just call it as data. So, uh, sorry. Um, you can just name it here also data, press enter and then close it. Or uh, you can also name this, rename this here. Uh, where is the rename here? Uh, rename, right? You can just rename this here as well. All right. Now, once you have named this as data, I now will take my second data and put it into query. Remember I said that you have two sources of data. One is your source data. The other one is the data where you write the VLOOKUP formula. Both these data sets have to come up as a query in the same Excel file. So this is one Excel file. I have already put one data set as a query in the Excel. Now I'm going to take the other data set and put it as a query in the same Excel files. How do I do that? For this data, uh, I'm just going to convert this into a table first. So control T for Tango. It says, uh, yes, table has a header, it converts into a table design tab. And instead of table three, I'm just going to call this as my transactions data, right? And uh, I'm going to go in data once again, and then click from table. This is a table from table. It will take this table, put it into power query. Now this data is now into power query and you can just take a look. The transactions has now also been loaded into power query. Both these data sets are in power query. Now I'm going to do a VLOOKUP and VLOOKUP in, um, 
power query is kept under merge query so you can just take a look we have merge queries on the top i'm going to click on merge queries click on merge query and this gives me a little box right here now the first one is my transactions tables obviously but uh, i have to write the vlookup formula here but then where do i search i search it in the data so the second table becomes data and which column is common so just pick up transaction column from here pick up the transaction column from here these two columns are common now not necessarily your transaction column needs to be of the same header by chance they are same but you can also have a different header that's fine and also not necessarily these need to be on the first place so this is on the first place this could also be on the second third fourth fifth place doesn't really matter you just have to select the common column from here and the common column from here that's about it and the option to keep in mind here is that you have a join kind a drop down here so here you will pick up which one left outer which was pre-selected left outer in layman terms simply means do a vlookup and you can see that it says that I was able to find 92,154 rows uh, out of 110,638 rows so these rows have been found the rest are NA let's just do a VLOOKUP and as soon as I say OK the VLOOKUP is done now as of now you would expect some kind of value here but it shows you a table let me just tell you what the table means let's just click on the double arrow button right here and let's just take a look what it means so if you just click here it says that it has got all the columns of that table so you can see that we have transaction code date value region category and manager all the six columns are here out of the six columns which ones do i need whichever do you need uh, you can just check mark on those so let's say we wanted value we wanted the manager i'm just going to click on these two and hit on ok as soon as i do that it'll just spread out two columns value and manager and my view cup is complete now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say close and load. Now this will take this data and put it into my Excel file. Now just take a look. We'll just take about a second or so. And it has now taken 110,000 rows of data uh, and looked up in nearly half million rows of data and given you all the records. And now just take a look. Whatever records it was able to find are kept on the top and whatever records it was not able to find are kept at the bottom. This is how a VLOOKUP is done in Power Query. Like I said, uh, VLOOKUP in Power Query gives you two advantages. One is speed, and you saw it was pretty quick actually. And the second one is it is automated. Now, uh, if I add more data into my data table, or if I add more data into my transactions table, my VLOOKUP is nearly automated. So let's just add uh, one more record at the bottom of this. So let me just call this as a random record called CC11 doesn't really make a sense so I'm just gonna save this file and um, come back on sheet number two now that I have added one more row extra I'm expecting that this should have one more row extra that is not going to give you any value but because obviously I know that there is nothing called a CC1 in the data table let's just go on sheet number two let's just take a look at the automation so right click and I'm just gonna say refresh the query is gonna run once again and give me one extra row which is CC1 and which is going to be absolutely blank for um, these two values yes cc11 is absolutely blank once again so that's how the vlookup works in power query if you have any questions around this please feel free to put them down in the comments and i'll be more than happy to help you out i hope you enjoyed it thanks so much for watching cheers and bye, -bye.